on on your web website. Website. <laughs> Apologies to anyone with this. Um, on your website, you will have this thing called timfun.php. Uh, a lot of themes have it. Um, or you can install it manually yourself. So you know you could have your domain, whatever, blah blah blah, blah slash timfun.php. What you add after that is something like um, question mark source equals and then the address of some image, whatever that image is, dot jpeg, and then you can add some other things to say, you know, I want it to be 300 by 400. But anyway, what's in essence happening is you have this file as part of your website. You tell it, I want you to resize this image to a particular size. Now the way that it does that is it goes and fetches whatever, whatever URL you give it. That URL could be any URL on the internet. That could be a, an image on Google, that could be an image on your own server, it doesn't okay. matter. But what it does, it goes and fetches that, puts it onto your server, tries to resize the image to the dimensions you've specified, and uploads it to part of your website where all your images live. Problem is, people worked out that you can actually upload, you know, hacker.php and specify that as the actual source, and it would upload whatever file the hacker wanted to upload, try to resize it, that wouldn't work, but it would still put it in this directory. And as long as the hacker knew that Tim Thumb saves all its images to this directory, they could just type in that address with that directory and their name of their file and do whatever they like. They could look at your passwords, they could delete your entire thing. But typically, what they did was more nefarious. They would actually insert little bits of code all throughout all your other templates. And all those other little bits of code inserted JavaScript through other bits of templates. So in the background, it would load redirections off to gambling or pornography sites. Or you know, someone would visit your home page and be presented with a picture of dancing bears or something, whatever. So they would really, and it's, there's very, I've fixed it on one of the sites I owned, and I actually did see your instructions, which are very comprehensive. Yeah, I was going to say. You've got, yeah, check out WP Guy. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Blog. Yeah. And I've got a post about it. So yeah. is there a fixed team of He has. The yeah, version. I mean, I yeah, two I've got a link, I've got a link yeah, to anything 2.x. Now, the only thing you've got to keep in mind is you can fix it, you can get rid of it. But if it's already got past the stage of they have actually gone and inserted code into all your other files, that's a bit more of a clean up. Go to security security.net, which is also on the post. Yeah. For $90 uh, per year, they will um, go and clean up your site, I'll get all, all the garbage off it, and um, notify Google that it's been cleaned, so within hopefully a few days. Because yeah. I know people right now whose sites are offline, because Tim, the Tim Thumb hack has filled their website with hacking code, which yeah. Google won't touch. I was, I was lucky in my instance because I pretty much followed, I didn't actually follow, I saw the same instructions on someone else's yeah. on the actual WordPress forums yeah. and they added after like, you know, steps one through to five, there was actually about three or four more steps that if you've already reached the, the stage of it has injected files, there was sort of a common pattern. Typically they would have injected some code into files that are in the WP admin folder or the WP whatever folder. Yeah. But again, you can't be guaranteed that all the hacks are going to do that. So again, paying someone to actually look it over might be a good idea. You're paying anyone an hourly rate, that's very cheap. Well, for instance, one of the sites that I did, um, I'm going to plug myself in, uh, Andrew Denton's website, zoff.com.au. I didn't actually, my name's not on it, but I built it for someone else. They probably wouldn't like me saying that. Anyway, um, it got hacked. So people would go to the homepage and they'd try to take you to Russia or something else. And so I had to fix that, and yeah, it's not good when you got someone saying, our website's been hacked, what do you... Because it's not your fault, really, because what you're doing is you're relying upon a really cool utility, which is, you know, something that I've got a box on my page that's that big, so I want to load an image in there that's that big, so cool, I've got this cool thing that does it. It just so happens that it also allows people to upload hacks. With, with this, um, Tim, um, is that in the standard installation? No, it isn't. So it means only if you've used a template, which is usually... Yeah, t templates usually included to do image resizing. Gallery plugins? Pardon? Gallery plugins? A lot of gallery plugins also use it as well. It's just a standalone script. Like, as a developer, I've actually downloaded it just by itself and used it just by itself in my own code. Like, called it to resize images. That being said, the latest version in its settings does have things to say disallow links from external sites. In other words, 
Only trust images that are on my server, which are going to be rigid ditch. Don't go and download something. There's a little bit of code change. Yeah, there's like two, yeah, one or two lines. And you can even say, like, let's say that you did want to load images in from YouTube or some external site, because of course you want a thumbnail for all your videos. You can actually add a list of safe sites and say, and that's again on your thing, add safe sites to this list. Yeah, yeah, I've just got the Sweet. There's also 